This next lecture, lecture four, is titled Placing the Major Arcana of the Tarot Cards on the Kabbalah, Correcting the Upside Down Order, and also Finding the Engine of the Sephira that Bridges the Discontinuities of the Gajev Enneagram. In one of his lectures, Gajev compares the ninefoldness of the Enneagram with the Kabbalah. I'm quoting here, those of you who are acquainted with the Kabbalah may now apply its symbol of the nine in interpreting the laws of active operation in the process of the harmonization of the nourishing of man's physical body. I may give a passing reminder also of the symbolics of letters and of the combined symbolics of words. Word number and form, when combined, give a still more perfect symbol. It is not possible for me to dwell in detail on every aspect of symbolism. For the sake of those acquainted with occultism in its different parts, I can only mention the system of the great symbols called tarot, and on the symbols of magic, astrology, and alchemy, each of which represent a symbolic system. That is the path leading to a knowledge of the truth of unity. End quote. Tarot decks have been in existence since Egypt and the same may be true for the Kabbalah. The tarot deck consists of 22 cards called Major Arcana and four suits of 14 cards like playing cards, an extra face card of the page to sit beneath the jack or knight, king and queen. It does appear that the 22 cards of the Major Arcana must be left over from some important spiritual knowledge in the same way as the diagram of the Ten Sephiroth of the Kabbalah. Between the ten Sephiroth of the Kabbalah, there are twenty-two paths of action, which has led to placing twenty-two major arcana cards on each of these connecting lines. The Kabbalah relates to the Enneagram's ninefoldness because there are really nine distinct Sephiroth. Since the bottom Sephiroth is the mirror of the top Sephiroth, and thus the major arcana cards must be connected. The 22 cards of the Major Arcana, leaving out the 22nd, which is the Fool card, zero, must represent the three octaves of the possible human bodies, body, spirit, and soul. The Enhanced Gajev Enneagram shows seven notes plus two points of action from its center triangle for each of the three octaves. Thus all three methods are clearly related. I intend to show this relationship in more detail here. One could take years of study to gain a full understanding of the Kabbalah, also known as the Tree of Life, and I cannot pretend to be an expert on it. However, I will discuss its connection with the major arcana of the Tarot and the Enneagram. Below is a traditionally accepted figure showing the ten Sephiroth, one to ten, and with the count of 22 major arcana cards, starting with 11 up to 32 on the lines that connect the Sephiroth. I will be reversing the positions of these cards. How these got assigned has to do with the following history that led to the universal rider weight deck of the Tarot and its relationship to the Kabbalah. Alpha Slevi, 1810-1875, was born... Alphonse Louis Constant in Paris in 1810, adopting the name by which he is better known, the Judaized version of his forenames, in 1845. In his 1854 visit to London, he summoned the spirit of Apollonius Tyana, and in 1856 he published perhaps his greatest works, The Dogma and Ritual of High Magic. In his work, he expounded the idea that all sacred writings and beliefs share the heart of a doctrine which is everywhere the same and everywhere carefully concealed. In his work, he also discussed the affinity between the 22 major cards of the Tarot and 22 cards of the Hebrew alphabet and the Kabbalah. His death in 1875, the year Alistair Crowley, also called Crowley, was born would lead Crowley to claim to be his reincarnation. The Dogma and Ritual of High Magic would later be translated by Arthur Edward Waite. Arthur Edward Waite, 1857-1942, to 1942, 
was an English occultist and member of the famous magical order, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, and published a number of important books on esoteric matters. His most enduring legacy is the tarot deck he created, which was possibly the most popular deck of the 20th century. In 1891, Waite joined the Golden Dawn, and he remained a member through its upheavals at the turn of the century, actually becoming leader of the London Temple in 1903, and changing the order's name to the Holy Order of the Golden Dawn. The Holy Order of the Golden Dawn declined after Waite's departure in 1915. He emphasized the insights of the meaning of tarot, whereas Crowley, their use in magic rituals. Waite's tarot deck is known as the Rider Waite or Waite Smith deck. Ryder was Waite's publisher. Waite directed fellow Dawn member Pamela Coleman Smith in the design of this beautiful set of cards, whose main innovation was the illustration of the minor cards in ways portraying their divinatory meanings. Previously, most decks had taken a rather literal view of illustration, with the four swords being depicted as four swords, for example. This deck was used to illustrate his book, The Key to the Tarot, published in 1910. Now, Wade switched justice and strength from their major arcana positions that are in the Tarot of Marseille. The abstraction of these cards make them somewhat interchangeable. I have left strength as Waite's card 8, because it fortuitously has a lion, representing Ezekiel's lion. However, there was a problem with the drawing on the judgment card, Waite's card 20, as the last judgment does not apply to the realm of soul, but rather to the spirit realm. So I moved it down to replace Waite's card 14, Temperance, because this position fits better with the final card of spirit. In looking at the drawings, I felt that Wade's card, 11 Justice, would work well at position 20, so I renamed it Understanding. Clearly, these two cards are meant to be next to their respective Sephira, Judgment at Kivora, Sephira, Judgment, and understanding 20, opposite Binah, Sephira, understanding. At this point, I had Waite's card, 14, temperance, without a home, and position 11, empty. Now, I and many others have a problem with the devil card being in the deck at all, and for me especially, that it should be the lead card of the soul. Seeing the first cards of the three sets of major arcana cards, beginning with Magician, with the first letter Aleph, derived from the pictogram Ox, on the first set, which represents the body, and the word Strength with the picture of a lion, for the spirit set, and the devil for the first card of the soul set. I thought of Ezekiel 110. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man, the face of a lion, on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox on the left side, and they four also had the face of an eagle. And also Revelations 4-7, the first living creature was like a lion, and the second living creature like a calf. The third living creature had the face of a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. Thus we have ox, a lion, and an angel. Thus I decided to replace the devil with the angel. And Waite's card 14, the temperance card, was perfect for it, as it has an angel. So I renamed it Angel, placing it in position 15. It is interesting to note that the angel card is placed sideways, flying, as in Revelation. So having the devil card left, I placed it in the empty position, 11. It seemed to fit. Alistair Crowley also renamed major titles such as Lust, Fortune, and Adjustment in his Thoth Tarot deck. 
The worst mess was created when Crowley and others decided to place the 22 major arcana cards starting with one magician or the full card, usually marked as 0 or 22, on the Kabbalah, on the first line at the top, which connects the highest Sephira, Kethra, with the next highest Sephira, Kachma. Then continuing to place them in ascending order on the descending positions of the Kabbalah lines that connect the ten Sephiroth. Wade did not place the full card first as Crowley did, but now most contemporary diagrams show it as the first on the Kabbalah, next to God. Some have placed the magician first, but still have the fool as either two or three as one of the direct rays of Kether. All those who have assigned the numbering of the tarot cards have assigned the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet for Aleph 1 to Tau 22. To the same card numbers 1 to 22, 21 plus 0. Aleph is shown in the figure at the beginning of this discussion as card 21, the first card of the ten Sephiroth assigned as the fool or magician, and card 22 assigned as Tau, the world. This association may have caused the upside-down placing of the tarot cards, but clearly this order did not come from ancient times, as can be seen in the next diagram. The figure here is an ancient representation of the Kabbalistic Tree of Life from the first century, with the names of the Sephiroth, and the paths assigned to 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And it's from figure 10, page 155, of the Bathir, attributed to Rabbi Nehuniah ben Hakana. However, as you can see from this ancient figure above, the letters are located in different places. The first letter, Aleph, is in the center, the last letter Tau of the alphabet is at the bottom, and yet the second to last letter Shin is near the top. This goes to show that their ancient significance seems to be lost or ignored. The modern Kabbalah decks are all supporting these same erroneous positions of the modern tarot cards from 1 to 22. Let me say that when used in fortune telling, the tarot cards are perfect in any order as their purpose has been decided before the reading, like heads is good and tails is bad, or vice versa. In any case, these cards function by engaging the psychic abilities of the brain, as long as the reader does not give too much weight to the painted interpretive pictures. It is the ancient knowledge that these cards contain that is being analyzed here, and which needs to be as correct as possible. Given the obvious relationship of the major arcana to three sets of seven, I decided to use the tarot for giving insight of the three octaves of the three bodies of humans, physical, spirit, and soul. Clearly the Kabbalah contains these three spheres, and so do the tarot cards when divided by three, giving three sets of seven for seven notes of the octave with the full card left out. In a moment of divine intuition, I looked at the Kabbalah Sephira to Barath in the center with the attribute of beauty connected to everything and realized that it must represent the engine that drives the discontinuities of the Gajev Enneagram between me far, so la, caused by Tito. And this illustration is from In Search of the Miraculous by P. D. Uspensky. The food octave of Gajev, shown above, begins at Do, passes the discontinuity from Mi to Fa with the help of the breath in the lungs. It is at this point that the Do of the spirit octave begins. See my other lecture, Key to the Soul is Within the Missing Stop and of the Food Octave, for more details. At the place soul to law, a certain effort described by Kajev as being part of duty allows food to continue to its higher dough and also allows the spirit octave to pass through its discontinuity 
of me to fa. Note that in this case, there is no automatic help like here in the food doctor. Thus, the spirit development usually does not transmute further than me in its octave. This place, soul to la, is also the place where do of the soul octave begins. Food completes its octave at the higher do, bridging the discontinuity t to the higher do. This higher do helps the passage of the spirit octave's passage through the activation point of soul to la and the soul's octave passage through its me to fa discontinuity. Then the spirit and the soul continue forward to their completion. I will show this figure in greater detail at the end. So now, reading from Beelzebub's Tales to his grandson, page 796. Come now and let us talk about these higher perfected being bodies, that is, about souls, who came to the holy planet Purgatory, to which all my foregoing explanations have referred. And so from the very beginning, when these higher being parts arose in this way and were perfected in beings to the required sacred gradation of objective reason, that is to say, when in accordance with the lower middleen of the sacred Heptaparapashanak, the body Kaschan, was thanks to the second being food, formed in beings, in accordance with the higher middleen of the same sacred law, the third highest being body was thanks to the third being food, coated and perfected. And when these completely perfected higher being parts were divided from the lower being parts, then they were deemed worthy to be immediately united with the most holy prime source and began to fulfill their divine foreordained purpose. Using Gajev's Ospensky diagram above, which shows levels within the body, lower, middle, and head. The three octaves might look like this. In my moment of intuition, I realized that Taparath is then the engine that helps to bridge these three positions, me to fa, sol to la, and ti to do. No wonder it is called beauty. What must be considered when assigning the tarot cards is the fact that the Kabbalah, being a Hebrew symbol, would be read from right to left although the tarot cards are placed left to right. To account for this, I have switched the Hebrew labels of the Sephiroth to opposite sides. I use the English principles of the Sephiroth, mirroring the brain, actually. The left side represented by the Sephiroth of Kachman, Wisdom, Chesed, Mercy, and Netzach, Power, is the right side of the brain, which uses an analog big-picture view and relies on intuition. Its bad side is tending to be non-realistic and flighty. The right side, represented by Severa, Albina, Understanding, Kibora, Justice, Hard Glory, is like the left side of the brain, using a digital sequential logic. Its bad side is rationalizing and judging. Note the four triangles and the two squares of the Kabbalah conform to my assignments of the octave position of the Sephira. There is a triangle at the top for the triune god, Ketha Kachma Bina, an inverted triangle at the bottom for the physical rim, Yasad Had Netza, the bottom one showing that Malkuch connects with Ketha. Two triangles, one inverted with the apexes at Tbarath, Had Netzach, and Kivara Chesa, which are the upper body and the astral body and the one triangle formed by Tabarath Kakma Pina, which is the soul. Note how Tabarath connects to all and helps the three octaves to complete their passage through the discontinuities to the next higher doe. The goal of my analysis of the 22 major arcana cards, 3 times 7 plus the full card, once placed on the Kabbalah at its 22 joining lines was to give insight into the attributes of the spirit and the soul on the three octave Gajev diagram. By analyzing the interaction of the major arcana cards on the Kabbalah, I intended to apply these relationships to the three octave Gajev diagram to further describe the attributes 
of the spirit and the soul. However, this project was first delayed by the major mistake that apparently all of the so-called experts have made in the current placing of the major arcana cards on the Kabbalah. When I purchased my first deck of tarot cards after graduating college, I always assumed the numbers of the major arcana represented a progression of spiritual growth from Magician 1 or Fool 0 to World 21. The Kabbalah clearly shows the action of God, Ketha, to our world, Yesod Malkuth. You might refer to my song called The Reading, performed by our family, which talks about the tarot cards. Once I looked at the current placing of the major arcana cards on the Kabbalah, I was amazed to find them reversed. Having searched for any ancient text that might support the accepted placement, I realized that the placement was arbitrary and, to my mind, totally incorrect to logic. It is no wonder that many have claimed that the major arcana cards have no relationship to the Kabbalah. However, since both have 22, and there is also a relationship of the 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, a connection has to exist. So instead of just proceeding into my project, I suddenly was faced with having to justify what I believed to be the true order, namely world at 21, being the universe of God, Kether, and magician one or fool zero being our world, Yasad, Malkath. In respect to the major arcana, it is some way fitting that in modern times the fool has been exalted on the Kabbalah, Clearly, the origin of the concept of labeling the lines that connected the Sephiroth of the Kabbalah must have begun by placing the Hebrew alphabet on them, designating the first letter Aleph as one. On the Kabbalah, all the experts have made the fool zero, or the magician's position one, equal to Aleph ox next to Kepha. Regardless of the fool's or the magician's position, it is the superficial alphabetic positions that must have determined the numbering of major arcana from Aleph Ox 1 to Tau Cross 22. This placement violates the gematra of the cards and also Hessing doctrine that places the letters of the Hebrew alphabet from less to greatest importance. The last letter, Tau 400, is Archangel Michael. The next to last is Shin. 300 is Gabriel. Then Resh at 200 is Sariel. Quaf at 100 is Raphael. Are we dealing with a pack of fools here? Am I really out on a limb to say that the card positions with the alphabet tagging along are backwards? One of the reasons for the reverse direction could be that the tarot interpreters have related card 21 literally as world, equated to the last sephra, 10, of Malkuth world, which definitely represents the world we live in. Perhaps Crowley may have suspected his error by relabeling the world card as universe. It is, of course, easy to fudge the mislabel by saying that Malkuth connects with Kether but that suggests a backdoor to Kether, which negates the quest up through the Sephira. In placing the cards on the Kabbalah in my order, reversed from the consensus order, I could have just reversed all the correspondences using card 1 equal card 22 instead of card 22 to card 1, but in going through them and taking into account the triangles and the Taparath engine, I altered their position slightly, as I will explain below, and also as I go through the major arcana cards from 1 to 21, I will justify my order from lower to higher. First, here is my complete diagram. To emphasize the major arcana as representing three bodies, I have notated three sets of 21 cards as follows. Magician to chariot will be B1 to B7, B for body. And B0 will be the 22nd full card. Strength to last judgment will be A1 through A7, A for astral body, spirit body. B2 
Kuchev Kestan body. Angel to world, one to seven, S for soul body. So you can see S6 and S7 at the top and B1 and B2 and B0 at the bottom. With Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti. Here is my complete spreadsheet. There are all the tarot cards in my order. In this chart, you'll see the three bodies, as I said, they are notated by S721 and A721 and B721. And the number in parentheses on the left is the number of the card, according to me. And the number below it is the number on the original tree that was shown. It is there for reference. And then in the column is the position that it is located, consensus view, which I say is wrong. And then below it, there's the picture of the tarot card. And then the next column is a little bit of background about the alphabet letters in Hebrew and what symbols they were derived from. And then the interesting one is what Levi said were the clavicles of Solomon. And it's interesting how they match quite well. I needed to order them against different cards, though. So, beginning, the Do, the highest point, which is crown, Kether, the first Severa on the Kabbalah. Then below, S7 is the world, and it's derived from the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet Tau, and it is a picture of the cross, which is quite intriguing as it is an important symbol to Christianity and to the Egyptian myth. And the description of that card is, one who beholds God face to face without dying and converses familiarly with the seven genii who command the entire celestial army. Then below this are the two other sephiras, T, understanding, Bina, and La, wisdom, Kokma. And so the second card from the top is what I have called understanding, and I used Wade's Justice card to illustrate it. It's S6, and it comes from the letter of the alphabet Shin, which is three candles, which does appear to be equivalent to the Holy Spirit. And, and the phrase that relates to it is, one who reigns with all heaven and is served by all hell. Then the next card, S5, is the sun, which I believe means knowledge. And the alphabet letter is Resh, which is imaged with a head, which does appear to be a human, which is the brain of the human, of course, and that is knowledge. That is what we live with, is knowledge. And then the statement to that is, one who knows the reason of the past, present, and future. Then the next card is S4, which is the moon, which I call reflection because the moon does reflect the light of the sun and the earth. And its image is quaff, which means horizon or needle, showing the direction in which the moon would rise on the horizon if you flipped it sideways. And also as needle, it is interesting in terms of the statement of Jesus, that a camel will not pass through the eye of a needle, and this is representation of the Essenes. And the statement relating to this is one who finds the philosophical stone. The next card is S3, the star, which I'm calling intuition, and it comes from the alphabet symbol, Tisadi, which is the fish hook, which is interesting, sort of like God fishing for us from the stars. And the statement relating to this is, one who foresees all future events which do not depend on a superior free will or on an undiscernible cause. S2 is the tower, which I call egotism. And the interesting thing is that it sits on the point of dat, which is D-A apostrophe A-T, which is often called the false sephir, and it is either darkened or not shown at all. And the letter of the alphabet is Pe, which is mouth or speech, which is interesting. You could imagine that those who think they know the truth want to mouth off about it all the time. 
And then the statement relating to that is one who speaks learnedly on all subjects without preparation and without study. So that would say those who believe they're learned speak out without preparation and think they're telling the truth. Now, S1 is the beginning of the soul octave, which was the devil, and I've changed it to the angel based on the images of Ezekiel, of the ox, the lion, and the angel, or at least winged creature. And the alphabet letter is N-I, vision. To see, obviously, seeing is the important point of the soul. It's not the speaking point above it which leads to the tower. It is the understanding within. And the statement I have to that one is one who is above all griefs and all fear. And then the next is the sephira, the note soul, which is mercy, cheset. And then below it is the last judgment, which was the judgment card move to a different position, showing the last judgment, which makes sense, at A7. And and it comes from the alphabet symbol, Samech, Thorn Enclosure, Protection. The thorn enclosure was used by the shepherds to protect the sheep from the wolves, which is an interesting point to be the last of the astral plane. Even though it is a last judgment, it is a protection above the death of the physical body. And the statement relating to this is one who possesses the secret of the resurrection of the dead and the key of immortality. And the next card is A6, and this is the death card. You could also call it the dark night of the spirit, as opposed to soul, because this is on the spirit realm, the second one before judgment. And its alphabet letter is Nun, Seed, Minnow, Emergence. It shows that is the seed of eternal life, certainly. And the statement relating to this is one who can neither be surprised by misfortune nor overwhelmed by disasters, nor can he be conquered by his enemies. Then there's a sephir of Fa, which is judgment, Kibara. And below that is the hanged man, A5, which is the acceptance of martyrdom and is really a representation of Peter crucified upside down, which was by request. And the letter that associates with this is Mem, and it means water, teaching, lifeblood. It does represent the active path of pursuing spirituality, which relates to that of Gajev, which requires you to use the path that is active to stay in life. And the Christians were willing to be martyred rather than hiding in the darkness. And the statement that applies to this is one who rules his own health and life and can influence equally those of others. And then the devil card at A4 is replacing temperance. And that is, as I said, that was just because that was the leftover empty place, but it seemed to fit. And the alphabet letter is Lamed, which means staff or guidance. You can think about the staff as the shepherd protecting the lambs, but you could also think of it as the prod that moves them along when they're not paying attention. And this prod is certainly the devil. And the statement that applies to this is one who triumphs over adversaries. And then A3 is the Wheel of Fortune, which really represents the point that Fate does inevitably decide everything you do. Even though you have choice, your only choice is to accept the fate that you have been presented with. And you might be faced with many possible paths, but you need to choose the one that relates best to your growth. And the alphabet letter that corresponds to this is cough, cupped palm, receptiveness which you could imagine as Tepareth holding your hand as you pass through the path you've taken, whether good or bad. And the statement that corresponds to this is one who knows the laws of perpetual motion and to prove the quadrature of the circle. And then the engine that helps to bridge these three positions, Mi to Fa, Sol to La, and Ti to Do, which is Tepareth, beauty, Sephir, in the center of the Kabbalah. And below that is the hermit at A2, 
which is the escape from life as a spiritual growth. And its image is yod, meaning hand. And in the method of a hermit, you have the hand of God that leads you. And the statement that I put here is, one who has the notary art of Solomon, which gives the universal science. And then A1 is the beginning of the astral body or the spirit. And it is the strength card. And fortuitously, it has a picture of a lion, which I have associated with Ezekiel's lion. You could say it's taming of the beasts within and the emphasis on the spirit path, which relates to agape love, love that represents universal love. And its image is basket, meaning abundance. And this is teth. This concept is a universal concept. Everyone is wishing for the basket of abundance. And it also relates to the feeding of the 5,000 and the 4,000 in the Bible where just a few loaves of bread and fishes fed everyone. And this is the point of spirit, that it transcends the physical realm, where hunger is necessary for the body. Again, it is the concept that Jesus said, you shouldn't worry about the things of today and the requirements of future, but be free as a bird who does not worry about the future, but proceeds on, and abundance is given to him or her. And I have here one who subdues the most ferocious animals and has power to pronounce those words which paralyze and charm serpents. Then below this ray, glory, hod, sephra. And then we get to the highest point of the body, which is symbolized by the chariot, which in the Kajev food octave is sexual energy and the chariot being the method to pass from the physical body to the astral body, or, on the other hand, to create another physical being. And that would be the choice. And this is the letter Cheth, which is ladder, and again reminds one of Jacob's ladder in the Bible. And the statement replying to this is, one who changes into gold not only all metals, but also the earth itself. And the next card is B6, the lovers, which is controlling the emotions. This is the point in the food octave that I have assigned to the endocrine system, which it appears that Kajev had left out. And you can see more detail in my study of the missing stop in there of Kajev. And the letter is Zane, which is the plow or the scepter, representing mastery. And the meaning of this would be the fact that in the food octave of Kajev, one has to pass from the note soul to the note la, and this is the note la, and this point is very important because it is an intentional actuator. And to have the ability to pass to this point is the most important thing that one could do, and Kajev refers to this as padog judy. And if you think about it, it is love that makes you feel that there is something higher than the physical plane. And the statement that applies to this is one who conquers love and hate. And the Sephara related to this is me, which is power, netza. Then B5 relates to the Hierophant, which is aligning the motor system with the heart. And its alphabet letter is Va, which means nail or connection. And the Hierophant is often called the nail, and that's the reason. And in medieval times, of course, he ruled over the emperor and the empress. And I have the statement that applies to that. One who knows at a glance the deep things of the souls of men and the mysteries of the hearts of women. And B4 is the emperor, which is the motor system. And the Hebrew letter is he, which means breath. And this card represents the cerebellum in the food octave. And the fact that it says breath is interesting because at the point after do re mi, the breath from the lungs enters in and helps one pass to the next position, which is the emperor at fa. And the statement that applies to this one who gives at once to all the most efficacious consolations and the most wholesome counsel. And the next card, B3, is the empress representing the heart, Daleth, door, crossing over, again symbolic of the concept that 
Fa and Sol, the Empress being Sol on the food octave, are the door to a higher self. You have the breath as the Emperor and the door as the Empress. In the statement I put here, one who possesses the universal cure to all ills. Then there is the card B2, the High Priestess, which I show as imagining a spirit, because its position on the Kabbalah is more the imagined point, just as the magician at B1 is the imagined point of the soul. The High Priestess is imagining a spirit, because they are not really involved in the actual Kabbalah, but more related to our dream on earth of something higher. And the alphabet letter that corresponds to this is Gemel, which is foot or camel, meaning journey. And of course, the gaining of a spirit is a journey. And the statement I have that applies to this is one who forces nature to make one free at one's pleasure. Then B1, the first position on the octave relating to the body, is the magician. And I have this as imaging a soul. And it is Beth, which means tent or house. And the concept of living in the house of God is a powerful concept that one wishes for. And related to this is the statement, One who has wisdom can rule the elements, still tempests, cure the diseased by his touch, and raise the dead. And then finally, at B0 is the fool's one who knows the emptiness of human existence. And the character that represents it is Aleph, Ox, which I have as Ezekiel's bull, meaning leadership, and of course the fool who knows the emptiness of human existence is actually the leader of all. And the statement that applies to this is, one who is in the midst of misery and poverty knows that the key to the wealth of the universe is within. And then there is the doe, of the sephira, which is the bottom point, which is kingdom yesad. And then there is another doe, which is called world, malkuch. And this is the connecting point back to the crown, which is, in a sense, the back door to God. And in this next picture, an understanding of the Malkuch Kepha connection of the lower triangle of Malkuch presents the necessary imagined goal to the higher state Kepha. The triangle is made up of the magician Domi on the glory side, Hod, and the high priestess, the female magician Do Re, on the power side, Netzak, of the right triangle. And these triangles have as the fool the connecting side to Yesod, which is where the quest begins. You can understand how all these wannabe magicians and high priestesses with, with their inflated egos would want to place themselves right next to the highest point of Kether. But remember, it is imagined, not real. You have to earn it. These triangular pair match the lower third of the Kabbalah, which contains its own octave corresponding to the Gajev, Food octave, Do, Magician, B1, High Priestess, Ray, B2. The next triangular pair up are Empress, Do, Ray, looking for power, and Emperor, Do, Mi, looking for glory, and humorously, the Hierophant, Ray, Mi, is superior as it was in those medieval times before science and the CIA, Mossad, and MI6 replaced the Pope. Note the inverted triangle. These match the lower third of the Kabbalah in the Gajev food octave. Me, Hierophant, B3. Fa, Emperor, B5. And Sol, Empress, B4. These last two match up with the cerebellum, Fa, Glory, which is the Emperor and cerebrum, soul, power, which is the empress. And what I had to do in my essay, The Key to the Soul is Within the Missing Stop and During the Food Octave, is to reverse Gajev's cerebellum and cerebrum, logically, because the cerebrum is higher than the cerebellum, and this is supported by having the emperor representing the cerebellum, the controller, from the digital sequential logic side of the Kabbalah. 
In this next picture, by means of the breath from the lungs, the hierophant, and the law of the lovers, B6, endocrine system of the food octave of Gajev, and the T of the food octave, chariot B7, which is the sexual system, and by means of Tabarath X, build the dough of the spirit octave, which begins at strength A1. This connecting side of the two right triangles that connects up to Tabarath X also connects with the two inverted triangles above Tabarath X of the Wheel of Fortune A3 and the Devil A5, which creates the dough of the soul octave S1. And again, you'll note how in my essay, the key to the soul within the missing stopender in the food octave replaced stopender in the endocrine system, which fits really well being right next to the lovers. And in this next picture, this is the middle section of the astral plane of spirit. On the edges of the square is the path of the hermit escaping from life as means of growth, advocating separation from life and asking God for mercy opposite the hanged man, representing martyrdom facing life head on believing that all who die for agape love will be judged worthy. The hanged man makes more sense when one remembers that Peter, the Christian ferryman, requested to be crucified upside down, and it is Peter who guards the gates of purgatory, Hades. Thus choosing a path that fate presents in the wheel of fortune, while following the golden rule of turning the other cheek will be allowed entrance, and there is the golden rule in the Wheel of Fortune A3, which is acceptance of fate. Using Tabarath passes the discontinuity from me to far, but the devil A5 is waiting to trap you. However, the bridge between the two is the angel which centers you by reminding that it is struggle that builds a soul. The tower card is the false path, which is the mistake of egotism, which leads to the abyss of Da, D-A-A-T, the dark and sephira that pretends to be an easy path to God. And in this diagram, you can see the inverted triangle with sides La, the spirit octave death, A6, which is the death of the spirit being worthy to become a soul, and T of the spirit octave at the last judgment, the soul octave, sun, S5, which is the base of the triangle of the understanding S6, wisdom S7 triangle. The two sides of the square are intuition, star 3, and illumination, star 4. One must seek inspiration from the four edges of this square, so as not to fear death or last judgment, or take the tower path, because the angel protects you and knowledge guides you. And now in the upper section of the soul, biblical creation agrees with my reversed order that God created the sun and then the moon and then the stars, which supports my reverse direction of the cards. And it shows in detail from Genesis that this is true. And then here is the final result of the three bodies of the Gajev Enneagram. There are three circles. There's the inner circle of food. The next circle is spirit on the astral plane, and the outer circle is the soul. And I have put the cards of the major arcana here. And also for the middle octave food, I have put the gajev positions of the food octave. Finally, the spreadsheet organizes all of these points on the circle into body, spirit, and soul. In the body realm at Do is the stomach, who is the magician, bull. And in the spirit octave, the Do is strength, Ezekiel's lion. And in the soul realm is Ezekiel's angel. There's the Do there. They're shown in yellow. And then I have the Do, which represents the completed soul in the reason of Potkalad. It is the sun, or Sophia that has reached perfection of body, spirit, and soul. The green represents the automatic activation, which in the food octave happens from the lungs. 
and in the spirit octave there is no automatic activation, and what is required here is agape love. And in the soul octave to the holy planet purgatory, there is also no automatic activation. And then the orange ones are the intentional activations, which in the food octave, it is between soul and la. And then the interesting thing in the spirit realm, the intentional activation happens because of the completed body octave below it. And in the soul, the intentional activation comes from the completed spirit at the level of Tenunal. And this shows the action of the three bodies on each other. And then finally, the fact that the completed soul, in the reason of Padkalat, which is Sun or Sophia, and the passive part of the triangle, Mifa, which is the automated activation at the reason of Anklat is the Holy Sun Absolute. And then Sol to La is the intentional activation which happens from the whole of the megalocosmos. And the three together, active, passive, and neutral, are the whole universe. So that ends this lecture. And I hope to follow up with a more detailed analysis of the three-body Enneagram in the future. Thank you for listening. Since I was a prophet, maybe I could untie the noose around your neck. But I'm just a jester, you might say fool inside of a tarot deck.